Hi, everyone. And um, for those of you that I haven't said hi to yet, hello. I've lost track of who's, who's come and who hasn't yet. Um, so welcome to my little demo class. And I hope you all have something to draw with and at least one photograph. Um, you don't need anything fancy. We're not going to do anything complicated today. I just wanted to um, give you an idea of what my class is like. And I thought we would just do something fun because I want everybody to feel comfortable and enjoy drawing, whether you have any experience with it or not. So what I chose for us to do today um, are some very simple things. We're going to do a very short blind contour because if you are not looking at your drawing while you're drawing, then you can't judge your drawing. And it's also a very um, good way to get very familiar with what you're going to draw. And it's a good connection for your eye and your hand. And the other thing we're going to do today is we're going to do a single line drawing. And that also is a good way to explore the photograph that you're using. Um, because mainly when you're learning how to draw, what you're really doing is you're training your eye. Um, you can have wonderful marks and that's great, or you can feel very uncomfortable and have to work on that. But if you don't train your eye, then you're gonna struggle. Uh, and I want you to have intention when you draw. If you want to draw something and you want it to look like what you're drawing, then you need to train your eye you, if you have that intention. If you want to get wild and just have fun, then it's not as important, but it's a tool that gives you all the options. So we mostly train our eye in this class. Um, so let's see, why do we use photographs? We use photographs um, because they inspire us, because we need reference for something that we want to do. Um, and I was, there was, I, I've got notes over here. So if I look over, don't mind me. Um, yeah, and just information. If you're drawing something and it doesn't look right, you can look up other photos of what it is you're drawing. Like if you're drawing a horse or something and you're having trouble getting it to look right, then you look at reference photos. And it's very good to um, look for certain things in photos, depending on what style of drawing you want to do. But that's something I'm going to cover in my actual class. So today, let's see. Oh, la, 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 la. oh yes. OK, so photos are unless you're using your own photographs, which is a great thing to do. I love using my own photos, but if you're using someone else's photo, um, keep in mind that that is someone else's work. Uh, so if you are doing a drawing that's very, oh, and there's Dia, hello. If you're doing something that's specific, if you're really trying to do a, a realistic drawing, you really, really need to think about um, changing the composition of the photograph that you're using because you don't want to just copy someone else's work. You want to make your own work and you're using the photo as a reference. If you're just practicing and you're not very feeling very strong about composition, then go ahead and use that composition. That's fine because you'll learn things when you do that too. Um, the only thing that I would say about that, if you're really copying someone's composition and you're trying to draw realistically, is don't pick that one to put in a show and don't sell that because it's not yours, really. It's partly yours. Okay, so moving on from that. Um, I love to draw and I love to have fun with drawing. And like I said, training your eye is probably the most important thing that you're going to do. So one of the quickest ways for me to warm up, and I'm gonna be warming up with you because I haven't had a chance to warm up today, is we're going to do a short blind contour. So I want you guys to pick one of your photos. It doesn't matter which one you pick and something to draw with. I like to use a crayon because you really can't erase a crayon and because I'm doing this on my camera and it's very easy to see. 
but you can use anything. And when you're doing a blind contour, um, I don't know if all of you have done one before, probably, but just in case, what I would like you to do is you put the tip of what you're drawing with on the paper and you look at your photo reference and you never look at your drawing. You are free from any constraints about your drawing. You don't have to worry about how what it looks like because what you're doing is you are going to look at the drawing and you're gonna look with your eye like you're drawing it and your hand and your eye are gonna go at the same speed in and around whatever it is you're drawing. Also, I encourage you not to just go around the outline go into what you're drawing. If you're drawing a person or an animal, don't just go around the outer edge. Find anything to go in. And so I'll do a, a quick demonstration of what I mean by that. Um, and never lift, because you can't see to go back. Now I am going to actually go over to my other camera and I am going to show you guys what I mean by going into the subject and not just going around. And then we'll get started. So I have a couple photos here and I'm just gonna look at my screen, at the photo on my screen. I'm not even gonna look at my, my drawing. And try not to peek because it's really kind of funny when you look at it afterwards. This is very freeing and it should be fun. So I'm just gonna start someplace. And I'm going quickly and I, you don't need to go this quickly. I'm doing this because I want you guys to do this too. I don't want it to be about my drawing but I'm just finding things and places to go and I'm following it. So this is her neck and I am now going down into her collar and up across and coming over and down into her collar again. And see, I'm not just going around the outside of her, but I'm rushing. So this is, no, that doesn't make any sense. It does to me because I know what I was drawing, but if you're to look at this, your drawing could look like a plate of spaghetti. It could look like a ball of yarn. It could also look just like what you're drawing. <laughs> if you do this a lot, then sometimes it really does look just like what you're drawing. So I'm not looking at this and I was looking quickly and I was drawing quickly. I would prefer that you actually slow down a little bit and I'm just gonna go, okay, just as an example, I'm gonna go into her eye. This is bouncing a lot and come around and here's her nose. And this might look backwards because I'm looking at the photo image of my image. And here's her mouth. And going back up to her nose. So what I just did was right there and it's backwards because I'm looking at it backwards, but I just did that right there but you go slowly and you try and connect your hand and your eye. And you're not ever worrying about what this looks like because you're not looking. This is just a warm up, and it should be fun, especially when we look at it afterwards. All right, so I'm gonna put us back on, put me back on me. And does anyone have any questions about how to do that? You just never, ever, ever pick up what you're drawing with. And you just keep going and you go in and out. You can go into the background. It doesn't matter what you're drawing on the drawing. You just keep going and try not to go over the same line twice. 
okay? You want to explore, you want to look and see what's in that drawing. And as you're going, you're gonna see where things intersect and connect. And that's one of the really important things about learning to see when you're drawing is you learn to see relationships and where things intersect, okay? So I'm gonna set my timer and I would like you to do this. I'm only gonna do it with, we're, we'll do it for three minutes. Very short amount of time because this is a very short class. And then we're gonna get to the next thing, but I want you all to just warm up a little bit and dive in. Okay, so just have a piece of paper and whatever you're drawing with and your photo ready. Is everyone ready? Okay, so I'm setting the timer for three minutes. Oops, it's set for 30 minutes. Huh. All right, and don't peek. Do not peek. Doesn't help. Ready? Go. Okay, so everybody stop and you can take a look. And I'm gonna un, un, re, unpin me, unspotlight me. There we go. And let's see, did everybody enjoy that? <laughs> it's kind of fun. I really love blind contours. I think they're really wonderful. So I'm going to show you guys mine just to show you that um, it, it does not have to look like what you're doing. Okay, let me get down to my camera. There we go. 
Okay, so I just did this one. Can you see it? Okay, so you know, it doesn't look like her. That's okay. But I was becoming familiar with a lot of the landmarks in her face and down in her coat and just having fun with it. So now we are going to move on to the next, the next phase. And I'm going to use this one because it's simple and I want to do a demo that actually you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and simplify. Oh, maybe I should just keep using the other lady. I'm going to keep using the other lady. Because now you guys are getting familiar with so and I can show you how we can draw out of the figure because if you're drawing something with single line, um, sometimes everything ends up right in the middle of the page. And it's not very interesting. And you always want to think about composition. So what I recommend then is going out from the sub the subject, you know, if you just draw her. That's great, but sometimes you're going to want to just go up and pull in the hills behind her or something just to break up the space around because you want to compose your page. So what I would do is start with a clean piece of paper, if you can. And what you're going to do now is you are going to take your photo and you're going to look very carefully. And so in order to do that, I'm going to have to pick this photo up because I have everything to the side and I can't really see her very well unless I'm looking at my screen. Uh, but this one, you do look at your drawing and you can stop anytime, but you don't want to lift what you're drawing with. If you do, you know, you might have to sneeze or something or sip your tea or whatever. You just go back to where you lifted and start there and continue. Um, the aim is to do this drawing with just one line. And it forces you, and you don't go back and forth over the same line. It forces you to find new things in your drawing. And once again, it shows you where things connect because that's usually where you're going to veer off. Although if you have something that's very, that doesn't have a lot of connection, like um, if I were to be drawing her, there's not a lot of places um, where there's other things intersecting with her. She's just got such a smooth face here. So you can go right across. And when you go across something that you're drawing, for example, I will show you that when you go across something like this, you want to try and pretend. Did you see that motion that I just made? I was trying to imagine how it would feel if I were actually touching her three dimensionally, um, which is, it's adding volume because you're using a two dimensional image and you can just copy two dimensional images. But when you're drawing across something like that, it's called a cross contour and you're trying to describe what the volume of that thing would be. So you're imagining that you're actually touching that. Okay, and if you go across it, you, I, if any of you have done any kind of clay sculpting or just when you touch someone's face or a pot or a statue, you just imagine how that feels as you're drawing and your hand will automatically lift a little bit or press a little bit if it's coming towards you or going back. And you don't wanna do it like too much, but you wanna just sort of have that in your hand because it will add some lyricism to your line for one thing, and it will help you to describe volume. So today, just don't lift. <laughs> Try not to pick up. So I'm gonna go back to this one. It's more complicated. There's a lot more things that are interconnected. So actually I am going to do it. I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna stop talking just for a minute 
just so you see what I'm talking about. So I'm getting down to her shoulder and I would like to break up the background or I just think that there's something interesting in the background. And, you know, of course I picked the wrong shoulder, I think, but I'm going to just go off into the background now. I'm just going to take off. It's over here. I'm just, there's a little dark over here. I'm just going to take off and pull that over. And I can actually draw like shadow shapes in the background because there's all kinds of rocks back there. And there's this sort of rocky shelf there. And it takes me right over to her hair again. So you see what I mean about not being locked into the figure because here she is and here's the background this is background so you can go anywhere in the photo you don't have to stick to the figure and what that does is it breaks up the space around your figure in your composition and it just makes it a more interesting drawing and you're exploring the whole drawing why not you know, you want to explore this photograph. So, so take advantage of it. All right. So does anyone have any questions about that? No? All right. So we are just about out of time. My gosh, a half an hour goes by so quickly. Um, give it a try. I, I think we're not going to be able to share the drawings because we're just about out of time. But normally what I would do is I would have you look at your photo and I would encourage you guys to do this. As soon as we're done, sit down and give it a try and see what happens and explore your drawing and explore the photo and try and connect your hand and your eye. Um, in my class, what we would do is we would work on this for 20 minutes and then we would get together and we would share the drawings and talk about them. So that's how my class works. I break it up into increments where I talk for a little bit and mostly in the beginning and then we do a lot of drawing. Um, and we do a little bit of critique and I tend to um, use different mediums. And what I also try to do is um, encourage you to look for certain types of drawings, depending on if you want to do a value drawing. And I'm going to switch back to my face while I'm telling you this. Um, so if you're doing a value drawing, you would look for a photo that has a lot of good shadow shapes, dramatic lighting from one direction. If you want to draw um, a friend or a grandkid or somebody and all you have is their school picture that's a very flat picture i would encourage doing something like a single line drawing or a contour drawing um, because you don't have shadow shapes um, there's all kinds of different methods of drawing and different photos will suggest different methods and we cover all of this stuff in the class so i really really hope that you guys will come and join me in my class. Um, but even if you don't, do some single line drawings and do lots of blind contours because no matter what kind of artwork you're doing, if you really want to warm up fast, do a blind contour, give yourself a break, especially if you're having a bad drawing day, 
just start doing blind condors. Because <laughs> you can't judge yourself when you can't see your drawing and, you know, at least give yourself a good laugh. Okay. So I would just like to say thank you all very, very much for coming. It's good to see you guys. And thank I you. hope to see you in the near future. And I think that's all folks. Was that it? Is that? I yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. No questions. No questions. I put um, the information for Jean's class in the chat. It meets um, Saturday mornings, 930 to 1230. And it starts on April 10th. Uh, it's eight weeks. Um, so there's 24 total hours of instruction. Um, and it's all online through Zoom. So it'll be very similar to this experience. But of course, three hours is a lot more time to a lot uh, more time. <laughs> yeah, really get into Half it. An hour goes so fast. It's, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, I look forward to meeting you. And I'm really glad to see a couple of you that I haven't seen for a long time. Hi, Dia. <laughs> and Jamie. And oh, so yeah, I hope you have fun. And I hope you enjoy this method. That's I love single line drawing. And if you use crayon, you can go into it with watercolor and ink and stuff and it doesn't destroy it. You can just keep pushing it and have fun with it. So have fun. Otherwise, why do it? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody.